Today on Handy Dad TV, I'm going to introduce you to the cheapest smart home device that I've ever seen. It is the Sonoff Basic, $6. You buy these in a four pack, they cost about $25. So you know, $6 and 25 cents. They are inexpensive and really easy to set up. So I'm going to take an ordinary extension cord and add this device to make it a smart device. Coming up. Welcome to Handy Dad TV. I'm Chris Heider, your virtual dad in the cloud, and my shop is looking a little bit different today. Yes, we are in the process of moving, so a lot of things are in flux and I'm packing. But one thing I am doing is leaving behind some smart devices for some things that don't have switches in my house. And so in order to leave them for the new owner, I'm putting in the Sonoff smart devices. And that way they can turn them on and off with their phone or with their Google Google Home or with their uh, Amazon Echoes. So let's get to it. This is really pretty simple. And this process is the same whether you are in the US or in Europe because these devices are voltage agnostic is what I'm gonna say. They work for anything from 100 to 240 volts. And the way that they work on the one side, it says input and the two wires go in on this side and on the other side it says output and the two wires come out on the other side and the only control on it is this little button right here which is used for not only you can manually make it go on and off but you also use that to set the um, the wi-fi you have to connect it to wi-fi now this is the input side means this is the one that's going to have the plug on it and then the output side is the one that's going to have the other end and that's what i can plug things into and it's really pretty simple. N is for neutral and L is for line. So that's where you have the uh, what's known as the, the hot and the cold or the black and the white. And when you have a, a plug like this, the um, line is always the smaller one. So this is a polarized plug. You can see this is the bigger one. The bigger one is the neutral. The smaller one is the line. And so if you follow those back, you can see right on here, mine, this extension cord has ribs on the neutral side. All right, all that comes in the box is the unit, and the unit has these two uh, strain relief things that go on the side. They get screwed in. There are some small screws that you'll need a Phillips screwdriver for, and you need a very fine either flat blade or Phillips screwdriver to tighten down the wires. Other than that, uh, it's pretty simple. It just comes with directions that tell you to download an app called eWeLink. And if you don't want to search for it, you can just use the QR code right there. In this situation, I'm not making a very long cord. You can make it as long as you want, but I'm just going to take about eight inches off of the plug, and I'm going to take about the same off of the end. So this is scrap wire. Again, just to make sure, the polarized plug, you should always be using polarized plugs because this side is the neutral side, the big one. And the thin one is the line side. So you have to know the difference and you have to be able to identify it on your wire. This one has ribs on the neutral side. So all I'm gonna do, Let's just separate these two. I'm going to use these wire strippers to strip off a little bit. Then you want to twist it as best as you can. And again, make sure you're looking at the input. It should say input on it. Push them in as good as you can. You don't want any wires crossing over between. Otherwise, that'll cause a short. Push them in as far as they'll go. And use the little screwdriver to tighten it down. Good and tight. Okay. And then... 
And the strain relief goes on. There, that's the input side. Now I'm going to work on the output side. I'm going to do the same exact thing. Looks good. The wires are inserted completely. Nothing sticking out. Perfect. All right, and there we have a smart extension cord. Let's see if we can test it. All right, with a light bulb plugged in here, I've got a blinking green light, and you click it, and it turns on. And you click the button, and it turns off. So that's how you can manually use it. And then what we can do, I mean, the power of a smart device is that you're going to make it so that you can work it remotely. So let me get my phone out. I need to be connected to my 2G Wi-Fi, which is um, the slower one, the 2.4 gigahertz. This one does not work with the uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, so I had to switch over. And I'm going to try this quick pairing option. And it says it needs to be as close to the router as possible. Obviously, obviously I am not right next to my router, but I'm going to see if this works. And it says, please set the device in pairing mode. And that's to push and hold it until the light changes. There. And it does three blinks. See, it still says looking for device. Yeah, this doesn't work for me. All right, in this situation, when pairing fails, which so far I've set up a couple of these, and they fail both times. And I don't know if it's that I'm not right next to my router whatever but i wanted to do the video down here but this is a good example so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go back to quit pairing and then i'm going to come into compatible mode now compatible mode says unplug and replug the device and then long press the button for five seconds until it blinks twice and then on That's the way that is. And then press it for another five seconds and it'll change the blinking pattern. See, it blinks fast. Now, I'm gonna click next. I'm gonna stay, this is the Wi-Fi that I want it set up to. And then it says, please connect to your, your phone to the device access point. So when I say connect, I'm going to switch over here and you can see it has this IT. Now the password, which is not in the manual, you have to see this in the FAQ, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you can join. And it's connected. And then you can come back here, click next. And then it's going to say yes. And now you can see Here it goes, sending network info. Good, and then it should reconnect. Now at this point, I'm gonna call this one wall unit. And I'm just gonna leave it like that. Got it. Now when it's connected to Wi-Fi, that light would be solid green. Okay, so that's the, the normal, everything's going fine. Now to turn on the wall unit, all I have to do is click. Isn't that, that's pretty cool. And then I can also get it to work with my favorite Amazon device. I'm gonna go into devices. No network found, yes there is. One plug discovered, when I come in here, it just says it's a new device. And if I click it, it goes on. So it knows about that device. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna edit the device name and I'm gonna call it wall unit. There you go, wall unit. So now 
I can not only control it, I can create routines and things like that, but I can also use voice control, which I'll show you upstairs. And then it works. Alexa, turn on the wall unit. And it works. Well, there you have it. This is now a $6 smart device. Plug this into the wall and plug anything in here that I want to control. Lamps, fans, you name it. So there you go. I'll leave a link to these down in the video description. You should check them out. It is really a pretty cool, very inexpensive device. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Welcome home. Be sure to subscribe and watch our new series, The Living Flip. Ooh. That has inch and a quarter. That's the little one. That's all I'm